When you think about female innovators in the world of aviation, pretty much only one name comes to mind, and that's Amelia Earhart. But before Amelia took to the skies, there was a young woman known as the Flying Schoolgirl, and she flew through lots of barriers and loop-de-loops to clear the way for the women who followed in her path through the heavens. She dreamed of a life in music, but in pursuit of that goal, another dream was born. It would be so compelling she would abandon her musical aspirations altogether, trading ebony and ivory for early instruction of flight, and in doing so would become one of the most innovative and impactful women in the world of aviation. Her name was Katherine Stinson, and I caught up with Matt Anderson, curator of transportation at the Henry Ford, to learn more about this woman with the pioneering spirit. Was she the first woman to fly in America? She wasn't. She was actually the fourth licensed female pilot in the United States, though, and she did set a number of other firsts for women. She was the first woman authorized to fly the U.S. mail, the first woman to fly a loop-de-loop -loop in an airplane, and she set several speed and distance records as well. Born in Alabama in 1891, Katherine Stinson earned her pilot's license at age 21, although the newspaper reporters at the time believed she looked much younger. She was a very small woman. She was only about five feet tall, weighed about 100 pounds, and they called her the Flying Schoolgirl. Because of her size. Exactly. She was 21. She looked like she could have been 12, though. The Flying Schoolgirl captivated audiences in the United States, but she was also the first female to fly in Asia performing stunt shows in both China and Japan in this 1915 plane known as the Bone Shaker. While it was still early in her career, World War I broke out in Europe, which required American personnel and resources, and Katherine Stinson volunteered. She'd hoped to go fly in the war as a combat pilot, but uh, that simply wasn't allowed in that day and age. So instead, she helped the war effort in other ways. She flew fundraising flights for the Red Cross. She and her sister trained a lot of pilots that went off to fly in Europe. And then later, she actually went overseas herself and worked as an ambulance driver. In seven short years of flying, Katherine Stinson had written her name into the aviation history books. You know, for all of those elaborate stunts that she flew, she never really suffered any serious injuries. But when she went to drive ambulances in World War I, then she did, in fact, contract the flu, which then developed into tuberculosis. So she survived, but when she came back to the United States, she had to kind of step back a little bit, and she was never able to be as active as she was before and gave up her flying career at that point. She later married and became an architect in New Mexico proving once again that one dream can often carry you to the next, until one day you're riding on a cloud.